spots in my eyes. I've got spots in my eyes. Not spots you can see, they're on my side. I see them when I'm looking at you. To start with, I thought it was dirty windows. Then I thought it was little flies in the air, but it isn't. It's spots in the eyes. I'm trying to find out where the spots are in my eyes. If you see me staring at a white wall, trying to make one eye look at the other eye, that's what I'm doing, looking for the spots in my eyes. Actually, I don't know what an eye is. Maybe it's a plastic ball, or it's a kind of little round fish tank, glass outside, water inside, and the spots are floating around in the fish tank of my eye. I wish I could get rid of them. When people look up at the sky and say, look at that, <laughs> not a cloud in sight, I look up too, and there's all that blue sky, and there, floating across that blue, are the spots. The Hollywood. We went to this cafe, and I had loads to eat. I had cod and chips. The cod was huge, and there were hundreds of chips, hundreds and hundreds of them, and I ate the lot. Then Mum said, anyone want any afters? And we looked to see what there was. There was apple pie, don't like that. There was jam roly-poly, don't like that. And there was ice cream, I like that. There was chocolate, strawberry and vanilla. I was just about to say, I'll have a strawberry ice cream and I saw something else. It said, the Hollywood. And it was vanilla ice cream, peaches, cream, chocolate sauce, cherries, trifle, jelly and Strawberry ice cream. So I said, mm. I'll have a Hollywood. Dad said, he won't eat it. They're huge. But Mum said, no, no, if he wants it, he can have it. Dad said, waste of money. He won't eat it. Mum said, a Hollywood, please. And we waited. Then, suddenly, it appeared on its own right in the middle of a tray with a little paper umbrella stuck in the top. Everyone in the cafe looked round. What's that? Oh yeah, that's the Hollywood. Oh yeah, yeah, that's the Hollywood all right. And the woman put it down in front of me. The Hollywood with a little paper umbrella stuck in the top. It was huge. It was taller than me. And I had this really long spoon to eat it with. And now uh, everyone was looking at me. I had to reach up to get to the cherry on the top. Got it. Oh, in the mouth. It was lovely. Then onto the ice cream <clears throat> and the chocolate sauce. <laughs> Dig in. That was uh, a bit rich, but okay. <laughs> Dad loves ice cream and chocolate sauce and he's watching me, but I don't give him any. Then there was some um, jelly stuff and actually, um, that wasn't very nice. Uh, actually, um, it was horrible. And Dad said, slowing down, are you? And Mum said, leave him alone. Now I was filling my cheeks so as not to taste it so much. My hands went hot and people were looking at me. Then I got to the trifle, soggy cake. And that was even more horrible. I couldn't bear to put it in my mouth. I couldn't even put it in my cheeks. I hunched my shoulders and poof, spat some onto my plate. I stopped eating. Dad said, stopped, have you? Mum said, leave him alone. I said, I don't like it very much. Dad's hand darted across the table. I'll finish it, he said. Oh yeah, you bet he said that. I'll finish it, he says. And Mum turned to me and said, never mind, dear. I don't suppose you'll ask for one of those again, will you? I don't suppose I will. The outing. Right class sex. Right class sex. I'm talking. I'm talking. I want complete quiet. And that includes you, David Alexander. Yes, you. No need to turn around, David. There aren't any other David Alexanders here, are there? Louise, it isn't absolutely necessary for your watch to play us London's Burning just now, is it? Right. As you know, it was our plan to go out today to the 
Science Museum. Now, I had hoped that it wouldn't be necessary for me to tell you. Yes, you as well, Abdul. You're in class six as well, aren't you? I saw that, Mark. I saw that. Any more, and you'd be out. No trip, nothing. I had hoped that it wouldn't be necessary for me to tell you how to behave when we go on a trip, but, and this is a big but, you haven't heard a word I've said, have you, Donna? This is a big but. I have to tell you how to behave, don't I? Why? Yes, it is because you never listen, but there's another reason, isn't there? Yes, Warren, because of what happened last time. Let's remind ourselves of a few things, shall we? The food, even as I speak. Would you believe it? I can see that Fan has opened her can of drink. I don't... I don't believe it. I really don't. Do we have lunch at 9.30 at school? No, we have lunch at 12.15. But Fan, you've already begun yours. If you remember last time, Joanna had eaten all her sandwiches before she even got to school. Lloyd sat on his orange and burst it. And Alfred put one of those little chocolate Swiss rolls in his pocket. And yes, it melted. Yes. So remember, lunch is when? Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Of course, lunch is at lunch time, but when? 12.15. Correct. Now, perhaps, I thought, when I got up this morning, I won't have to tell Class 6 about what to do when we get to the station. But then I remembered David's little gang, who decided they wouldn't wait for me to tell them what train to get on. And before we all knew it, David and his little gang were heading for the seaside on their own. Now, when we get to the museum... Of course, you're not listening, are you, Lydia? But then, of course, you didn't listen last time, did you? And then you wondered why you sat on Lloyd's orange after Lloyd had already sat on it once. When we get to the museum, do we run about the corridors? Do we run around screaming? Do we go sliding on the shiny floors? No, we don't. No, we don't. No, we... Thank you, Mervyn. That's enough. I'm very glad you've got jam in your sandwiches, Mervyn. We're all glad you've got jam in your sandwiches, Mervyn, but what's it got to do with sliding on the floor of the Science Museum? Precisely nothing. I'm very sorry, Mervyn, but nobody, nobody at all wants to know about the jam in your sandwiches, Mervyn. Now, when you're ready, when you're quiet, we'll all go. That doesn't mean leaping up in the air, does it, Karen? Louise, why is your watch now playing the He's a Jolly Good Fellow? Yes, I know it could be, she's a jolly good fellow, Zoe, but that isn't what we're talking about now, is it? Mervyn, if I hear about your sandwiches, your jam, or the jam in your sandwiches, if I hear about any of it once more, I shall give them to the ducks. Yes, John, what do you want? I don't know what ducks, John. Any ducks. Right, when there's complete quiet, Complete quiet. You'll find your partners and stand by the door. Oh, no. Not one of those... Not another one of those little chocolate Swiss rolls again, Alfred. Surely not. Marcia, you cannot have Charmaine and Donna as your partner because that makes three, and three doesn't mean partner, does it? And perhaps you could put your comb in your bag for at least three seconds just giving us enough time to get to the door. Right, OK then, Class X, we're off. Why not leave your watch behind, Louise? Useless information. I read in a book that giraffes have no voices. The Red Sea is blue. Gorillas can't swim. Black treacle is brown. Elephants can't jump. And nothing rhymes with orange. Does it? <laughs>